Hello everybody, welcome back. Got another tutorial for you today. Now, this one kind of comes about from strange reasoning. So, I was, went back through a bunch of my old art that I had uploaded uh, you know, a couple years ago. And I actually found the image of the very first time I'd ever posted up things of my persona. And it was a, a picture of him hanging upside down by a rope uh, tied to his foot. And he was just complaining that his friends left him for dead. Um, and I noticed that I had a torch there. Now, I've always loved to draw a fire. And I've always loved to have like flame effects and the lighting from them and stuff like that. That torch was terrible. <laughs> Looking at it, it was terrible. And it kind of made me realize that just how much I love to draw it. So, I figured that would be what i do the next tutorial on fire and lighting effects from such. So as you can see here, I already have the entire thing sketched out and drawn down. In fact, I even refined the line art a little bit. If you can see areas like down here are thicker, uh, like they're thicker than over here, yada yada. So because this part isn't so important, like the only thing I could talk to you about here, yeah, the only thing I could talk to you about here is like what, what's having the light like, where's where the light coming from? Or where is the fire coming from? And it's plenty obvious there's a torch right here. I mean, sometimes you won't have the object in view. Sometimes it's, like, in the background or it's just the fire being there for some reason. So, to each their own in that case. But I already hit put everything down to save some time, so let's jump in. So, the thing with fire, after I'm going, I'll keep the blue in the background because that makes it look a little bit more interesting while I do this. Uh, use multiple layers. <laughs> but the thing with fire is it doesn't wrap below things, but it wraps all around them. Now, what I mean that is, since this area of the torch, now we're going to assume that these are rags and they're covered in some form of fuel, maybe a, like kerosene or something. Um, But the bottom side over here, since it's below the torch, the fire shouldn't wrap around it and get down here. Sure, maybe this side down here might be on fire, or over here might be on fire, but uh, the things over on this side would not be a flame. Same goes for down here. But, since this side is on top, it should have flames actually coming out over here. And, of course, the top as well. Now, before I get started actually drawing the flames in here, let's jump over here, talk a little bit how how they're supposed to look. Now, of course, t take this in stride. Like, it doesn't have to be exactly this. Okay, my stuff is not a one-to-one. -one. Here's how you do everything. I say that every time, don't I? But one good way to look at it is it's just a bunch of teardrop shapes looped over each other. That one does not connect at the top. But yeah, it's just... A bunch of teardrops and then of course once you have the shape you go back through and you erase everything along the bottom and you have the rough estimation of fire and of course the teardrops can be kind of oddly shaped and you can even throw them oh, that's not a teardrop you can even throw more kind of around here so say if I erase this and then you smooth it out And basically, you just keep this going until you have something that you really like the look of. It would they'd show up down here. You know, just you just keep on building up on it. And of course, every single time you kind of smooth out the lines and you make it seamless. There you go. But the thing with fire is, is that it's very sporadic, very like there's no defined shape to it. There's no defined angle to it. So you can have things... Ugh. Points are nice if I don't do rounds like that. But you can have things that are kind of wavy and crazy looking. And of course all this is just built up out of those teardrop shapes. Right there. If I can show these properly, right there would be one, right there would be one. 
this is just like one long shape or you could theoretically cut into small ones so that's getting kind of nit nitpicky this one is one that's jumping over to the side and colliding with this one down here and you can see kind of what I'm getting at all this is just a bunch of simple shapes merged together and so long as you can break the fire down into that you should have a pretty believable shape and of course don't stick to it fire is unpredictable fire is strange fire is odd so if you don't you don't have to stick to that teardrop shape idea the entire way through just because then it'll look a little bit wrong because that's not how fire works so as we get started down here i'm gonna bring it up along the side with a outwards curve ignore the one i deleted no one cares then as it loops back around comes back up now this fire is not going to be that big it's mostly just there for light so there's no reason for it to be you know large and dangerous but it's going to have those kind of weird spikes jutting up from it just because it's it still has to be big enough to be able to provide light then it's going to come back down here with a large curve now uh, down here at the bases of the fire it's always wider as in no, wherever it's coming from it'll immediately jut out and then start looping back up and then back down around where it'll bubble out again as it kind of cuts off so as long as you can keep that general shape as you're going up and I don't know why I put a point on that it shouldn't have a point at all but as long as you keep on slowly building it up as you go along and not always doing round curves like this you can have points pointing down as well just keep in mind that the tops of uh flame like spits of flame i don't know exactly what these would be called but the things on top they're pointed as it should be because that's where the least amount of the energy is in the flame and it kind of disperses in that way now as i said before you could have like fire going up here or kind of like looping back down i'm gonna forgo that because i feel as though that's not going to be that useful here but in the coloring phases uh these areas down here will be very brightly sh shaded just because there should be fire there and i want to have some semblance of it now i'm gonna make the previous layer a little bit opaque just transparent i I got opaque and transparent confused again. Gee, always do that. But I'm doing that just so this is a little bit easier to see. Now, this is the outer area of the fire. The way the fire always works is the lightest shades are the furthest out from the base, going from yellow. So I'll just kind of put this to the side here. Yellow, blindingly bright yellow that hurts your eyes, to orange to a red a deep red and then ultimately down to blue which is going to be the darkest shade now notice each time i also dropped this this bar that lowers the saturation just because it not only changes the color but it does get darker so the colors have to actually get darker since these two are pretty much the same color but it helps ease the progression down and then of course once these are just kind of bled together if that tool blurred better <laughs> know your programs but yeah those are pretty much the colors you're going to be using so at the core of the fire it should be the darkest it should be the the blue yet at the edges it shouldn't be blue if the edges of it are blue or if the edges of it are really dark that means that the fire itself was really dim or it's not that strong just because the base of it is the edges so it doesn't have that force to actually go out and get the lighter colors and of course there's things like white hot fire because you know the white fire is the hottest so if you see the white fire generally that means that it has surpassed the yellow so what you do is you go through and you kind of make these core areas brighter 
keeping in mind the shape of it overall, just so you don't kind of break the rules you made. Because remember, the blue is the core, but it still has to follow the contours that you've made previously, because obviously this blue part eventually turns into the brighter areas at the edges. And then all these places in between are going to be done in the coloring, just because I want to have that semblance of it, but I don't want to actually make it hard lines. In fact, you could probably do that just in the coloring. So, there you go. That's the fire. I don't want to do lines. <laughs> what? He moved it up. He changed it in the middle of the video. Yes, I did. Because that's one way to do it. You can have the lines, you can have the outline of the flames, and those are the flames. You can color those in and be done. But, uh, for me, the way I like doing fire the best is not having lines at all. It's just throwing them down onto the paper. Well, canvas in this case. Is it canvas? Yes, it's canvas. This, like, digital thing. I, I'm considering it's a canvas. Don't quote me on that. But what I like doing is just not having lines because that makes, to me, makes the fire seem a little bit more lively. So, the way that this would work is it's the same thing. Once you get a color that you like for the brightest one, once I can get a color I like for the brightest one, I put down like the best colors over here. I should have kept those. What am I doing? There we go. I like the way that looks. But you just kind of go through and make it again. As I said, I enjoy drawing flames, so this is no issue for me. And of course, it looked a little bit different than I did last time because obviously I drew it differently. It looked different because I drew it differently. Yes, that's exactly how that sentence is supposed to go. I completely did not botch that before I said it. Ah, uh, <laughs> flames look different every time. There you go. Is that, yeah, that, I'm fine with that sentence. So I'm going to fix that up a little bit because I didn't like the way it curved down there. In fact, I don't like how, how high this side gets. I want this side to be the largest. So I'm actually going to erase this half and lower it overall. I was a bit overzealous with that first initial curve. There you go. I'm much happier with that. So, that's the outer area of the fire. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm actually just going to kind of roughly put in where the base of it is, and I'm going to fill it in and then clean up the corners because I just can't quite catch the corners of the flames. Now, this is looking kind of difficult to see. That's pretty straightforward. Yellow on, on white is very, very difficult to, to be able to see. So one way you can go about that is going to the layer underneath it, or even the bottom layer, as I'm going to do here, and just put down a really dark gray or a medium gray. That way you can see the work you're doing and you can kind of pick up on spots that you missed. So all these little areas I didn't see. The top corner here is not that straight. That area has a weird like hook to it. Basically, go back through, clean up what you did. And that uh, colored background thing, actually some, some artists recommend that you should always have a darker background just because, you know, staring at a screen, a bright screen for too long can hurt your eyes. So, I don't just because I haven't gotten used to it, but I probably should, Everything, all things considered. Alright, the way I'm going to do this, I'm actually just going to erase out the edge. Good enough for me. Now, we have this part done. So, we can either preserve opacity, which most all programs will have that capability, and what that does is, as I've said before, it just makes it so you can't draw outside the area. It only draws on what was already drawn on in that layer. But another option we have is to go up a layer and make a clipping group, which is the same thing, but it's on a different layer. And later we can unclip it and see the whole thing. For this, I'm going to actually just make it on the same layer and preserving opacity just so I can make this a little bit cleaner. And we're going to go through and darken the colors. Now, the white should be 
at the very top edges. So this orange layer directly underneath will be... I'm making all these awkward pauses. The orange layer will be underneath it, obviously, but it'll also be in the core of areas, like up here. Because this area is so thin, it really won't have any darker colors in it. But that area is much thicker, and so it should have something. This is the only color that does that, unless, again, you're dealing with incredibly hot flames. So don't get like too crazy with any of the other colors when you're doing that. And of course, the outer edges like this should be, should be taken over by the orange color. And once you have it, you kind of do the bottom layer area. Now, if I did this correctly, I should be able to just fill it in. Yep. So you have the second second layer. And of course, you darken it. I made that a bit too dark. Now, this one won't be showing up inside like that. It goes into a bit of like magma territory. So this will just be sticking underneath the other layer and might want to take it up a little bit closer than you're willing to with the orange on the yellow while all at the same time not strictly sticking to the the curves that you made with the yellow slowly very slowly as you work down through the colors all the curvature is lost until you have just kind of a basic flame along the bottom and as I fill this area in, which I'm just going to fill in right here, I'm going to point out that uh, the line work for this, or the line work for the flames before, looks very different than it does here. Again, that was because I did them completely differently. So I'm going to jump directly down to the blue. And uh, see, that's a little bit too bright for me. I'm going to smudge that over just a little bit. A little bit better. And these will just kind of be a searing color along the bottom. Why did I do it like that? Don't ask me, I don't know. But yep, just kind of along the bottom edge. And of course, I'm going to take this off a clipping group in a moment here and color in the torch so that it's it makes sense as well. And again, the way that this stuff does is it doesn't exactly match the curves up here. Like, you're not going to see blue fire doing that just because it does so up here it just kind of makes a point and then the yellow fire is the one that gets the most insane i'm saying yellow fire like it's actually a thing like it's it kind of like its own personality yellow fire is the crazy fire it's the best at parties you don't know what it'll do next burn your house down that's what we'll do next don't invite yellow fire to your party kids not a nice person. So, as we zoom out, there you go. Fire. Bit of a self style, bit like seriousness. And what I'm going to do is take off the opacity, or the preserve opacity, and just bring it down here. Now, I don't personally like it when the fire completely takes over the stuff that it's covering, because you can see through flames. And there's two ways you can go about preventing that, if you decide to do this yourself. You can either take the thing and drop the opacity of it, just so that everything behind it will always be visible. Or, you can take something that has a variable of opacity, like, say my pencil tool, I have this, which changes the opacity of it. And you can continue drawing it using this changed opacity layer. That way, that kind of the very edges of it, and I'll drop that a little bit more, the very edges of it will be clear. They'll be see-through. Transparent. I'm actually going to use the word this time. So as I kind of bring it along here. And yeah, that's basically how this will go about. It'll go down across these crevices, as I pointed out before. And have just kind of little licks of fire. Licks of them? You know what? They're licks now. Just because. That sounds cool. Do I need any other reason? I certainly hope not. That's not the world I live in. And 
yeah, it just kind of follows these contours, remembering that it never goes down here. Yet, this one did a little bit, mostly because the flames had to originate from somewhere. And so, naturally, you kind of have that effect happening. And then it'll, as it creeps up, it gets bigger and bigger until it reaches the normal flame. And all of these sides will have this. Now, this is kind of pretty far in depth with the flame itself. In fact, the fire will probably look more detailed than the rest of the drawing when I'm all done. And that may actually be an issue, but I had fun drawing fire, so I'm keeping it. And the same goes with the red, orange, and yellow, respectively, depending on where it is and uh, where it's coming from. And if you want, you can kind of do so with each of the other layers as it slowly builds up, just because you want those edges to kind of have that, you know, clear look to them because the in the end the fire is not that visible like you can't stare at a flame and say oh right there's the blue spot that's exactly where it ends it's a lot like looking at a rainbow you can't tell exactly on a rainbow at what point it like red goes into yellow well it goes into orange first but you get my idea wait does it go into orange i'm i'm forgetting how a rainbow looks yes i'm forgetting how a rainbow looks i cannot remember exactly what a rainbow looks The things I do to you guys make me forget rainbows. As we zoom out, see, that looks a little bit nicer. And if we want, we can take the next layer up, or next color up, and kind of add a bit more detail down here. That's an option, not a necessity. Of course, it would be stronger up here, yada yada. There you go. See? Nice. Then as the red... Oh, of course, I did. I'm burping all the time. I take the orange and I do that for the next layer instead of the red as I should have. Oh well, I'm keeping it. It'll be a nice change of color. Now, same as before, the next layers going up will be a little bit more sporadic, a little bit more random if you're doing it this way. Again, you could just change the opacity on the whole thing and be done with it. As I said, that might have been a smarter move in my case, but... I'm having fun. I like drawing fire. And if you don't have fun while you're working on this type of stuff, then you're insane. Just, there's no reason why you shouldn't be having fun. I'm not even going to express that any further. So some larger areas for the long curves, and then it slowly comes to a point. You're going to be staring at me doing this for like the next few minutes, so I'm just going to keep on talking because eh, there's nothing else going on. Now, you're going to be cutting off a lot of the yellow with this part, just because the orange is, again, very sporadic in how it changes and how it grows using this. Mostly because, like, it's changing a lot, and you're going to be taking up a lot of the space that you left before. But we're going to make up for that in the yellow stage, when that similarly grows quite a bit as well. Get a little bit more of a curve onto that, connect them slightly. Just make it more interesting of a shape. Don't think too much, too hard on it. Just remember that so long as you don't suddenly make the fire do something impossible for fire to do, it will, it should still look correct. Because again, fire does not have much of a solid shape. I'm actually going to make the brush a little bit bigger on this one. Now, I'm going to apologize for anybody who does mostly traditional art with this style. I may do a tutorial in the future on this if I get interest on it, but the style I'm showing today is going to be primarily focused on digital illustrations. Uh, while I do really enjoy traditional artwork, it's just more difficult right now for me to record it, so unfortunately it's not much of an option. And as I get back into this, Again, the yellow should have the most sporadic, the most wild areas because it's going to be the most loose. It's going to have the lowest amount of energy for everything else, and so it shouldn't stay condensed in together. Now, up here, 
at the lick of fire at the top, I'm using lick of flame, haha, it will actually kind of spurt off a little bit. Just that's a bit of excess that comes off the uh, the tips of it. And as this should go off, it'll just dissipate into nothing up here, into like just pure heat. And areas that kind of come to an abrupt end will end up doing that. So that ends up looking a bit more solid. A bit more solid, no. A bit more as flame should. And then take the whole thing and I'm dropping the capacity a little bit. Just because I want to be able to see a l just a little bit of what's behind it. Bring it down to like 80 something. And that's fire. Aha! As I make it a clear background, or a white background, you can very clearly see the black lines, which is kind of what you want. Again, the flames will not be just solid. They're not going to be opaque. See, I'm using these words correct this time. So I'm going to kick this in the time lapse real quick, do all the coloring, and then I'm going to, at the end, show you a bit more on the shading end of things. A bit more on the shading end of things. A bit more on how to shade using this fire. See you soon. And welcome back. So I've colored in everything, did a basic background, nothing too fancy. I might go back and refine it a little bit in a moment. I just kind of want something there because the plain white was pointless. And if you look to the side over here, I put all of the colors onto a single layer. Again, this is another style that's a bit more focused towards torch, tor torch, torch, towards uh, digital media rather than traditional. But you can find something similar to this to do in, in traditional as well. But uh, the way that we're going to be coloring with, or shading with color, I already colored it. Color with shade, ooh. Um, but the way we're going to be doing that is taking uh, all the layers here, making a layer above it, making a black, clipping group, and then lowering the opacity. Not wondering, why are you doing that? Because... The way that we're going to shade with color, at least this time, is to make a black layer and we take the color we're going to shade with, say in this case it's going to be yellow because that'll be the color of the flame, maybe something a little bit, actually, yeah, let's go a bit more orange for this. And then you simply color in on the shaded layer. So this side of the face is closer to the flame, so it'll be rather bright. The top of the snout maybe doesn't is a bit more indirect. The neck is going to be very bright as well. In fact this whole half the body should be really bright. And then keeping in mind things like wrinkles of clothing that might hide light behind it. Or things like the torch being super super bright actually i'm gonna have to go back in with a little bit of blue there in a moment and then reflective surfaces like the armor pads shoulder pads armor pads yes yes brain that's exactly exactly what i meant then as we move down the wrinkles of the clothing actually a large portion of this will just be just flat out colored do 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 And then the glove here, since it's really close, will have rather bright shading compared to everything else. But the things that are further away have no chance of getting any indirect lighting, so they'll actually be really dark right behind it. Basically, the further away an item is, the lesser the contrast will be between the lightest and the darkest areas. So say if it was really, really close, we could just use the pencil. Well, slightly blurred, of course. But things further away, you get more and more vague as to how they're colored. And the reason why you wanted this to be on a different layer is that you can't color outside of it. Because it looks really awkward when suddenly there's like a light spot over here when there really shouldn't be. 
And that's only because you smudged how you were painting the clothing. Painting? Shading. I'm just getting all the words confused right now, so, you know, excuse me as I don't work. See, I couldn't even think of something clever there. I'm just a complete hopeless mess right now. So right here, there'll be another wrinkle. Kind of a wrinkle here, kind of a wrinkle here. And it's just kind of redefining what you've already put down. And the, a lot of combined things I've said in previous styles. The, the handle of the torch I made kind of grooved with wood. So... A wooden torch does not seem like a very smart idea, all things considered. I mean, if it's the head that's burning, yeah, but, you know, to, well, who's to say that when the head's not done, it's going to not look down at all, and that's a little silly. And one thing you can do here is, once you have all this down, I'm not going to do the hair quite yet, although I should actually get the ear. Arter. Just kind of roughly into the ear here. But once you have all this down... One option you can do is take your blur tool and just kind of go across it, making sure that all the stuff is a little bit smudged, enough so to where your brush marks really don't show up, just to kind of make this seem a bit more shaded and colored in from the light source instead of painted. Because, again, you want to make the feel that this is, this is you know, a really dark area and this is the only form of light which is why it's literally the brightest thing in the picture and why it's also uh, why the other side of the character is going to be really dark. So as we kind of go around, getting rid of all of our marks, and in the larger areas like this, you want to be really, really persistent getting rid of it. Because in large flat areas, it could, you could very easily have kind of lines in there, and that just doesn't look right because uh, the large areas will be more so one solid mass rather than uh, composed of indiv individual areas. So you have to be a bit more persistent there. And almost done. Now size going to have to catch up to me because I the blur tool on size is a little bit slow after a moment. There, that's caught up. And that's the first layer of shading. First layer? What? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean that it's the first one that's done. Also, look at this. This is, I always think, really cool. If you take up the clipping group, for one, you can see the area I did over here, but then you can see where all the areas that came off. So, all the areas like down here, across the ear and the hair, you'd have, and behind there too, you'd have to go through and erase all of that like manually and bring it right up to the line work but not crossing it just so that it, the shading looks right and this style just makes it easier but no you make another layer because since this is the only light source you have to make sure that it's well defined so another layer and you go over highlight areas and kind of the same deal with this so bright areas will get another work through while darker areas are left in the shadow. This will make brighter things seem really bright and darker things seem really dark. Because again, this is the only light source that is going to be in the picture. So you have to have to make that very clear that it's really dark otherwise. Especially since a torch doesn't actually light up the room that much. Don't know if you're well aware of this. Fire, not at all like a light bulb. The things that have just like a single torch and lights up the whole room absolutely lying. Don't trust those things, they're lying to you. So as I go back through here, now this time you can be a bit more like sketchy in how the uh, lines go down, mostly because uh, we may smudge these just a little bit, but the work underneath it, the colors underneath it, will actually cover up most of the, uh, most of that. Plus, we're actually just going to drop the opacity just a little bit. Just so that it's not nearly as bright and blinding. Down here, I don't quite like that, so I'm going to smudge it just a little bit. A little bit got on the torch, but I'm fine with that. Okay. And also on this layer, what we're going to do is we're also going to add the blue in. Because I'm sure some of you completely didn't notice that I got the blue. 
So, it doesn't have to be blue actually. Let's just see real quick how red looks. Nah, let's make it blue. Make it fun. So, as the blue coloring shows up here, we blend that in like crazy. Just because I don't want that to be very direct. I want it to be a very indirect light that's coming from there. Because we're using white, or white, we're using yellow otherwise, it'll make it look a little bit awkward. There you go. And it even looks like it's burning a little bit because obviously the torch would be burning away. Now this layer is also the same layer that we're going to be putting on the... I could get my color back. Okay. This layer is also going to be the layer that we color in the hair. Because we didn't color in the hair before. Mostly because since hair is made of individual strands, it looks a little bit awkward to be paint, or painted, shaded as a solid mass. Because, you know, if it's shaded as a solid mass, you kind of imagine that it is a solid mass. And pretty certain you don't just have like a solid like lump of hair. That'd be kind of awkward to have to manage. Man, could you imagine like trying to manage that? Like going to get a haircut? You'd have to like get on a buzz saw. That'd be, that'd be tough. No one wants to get a buzz saw at a, at a barbershop. That's just, yeah, that's gonna get messy fast. And then the police all get called in and, oh geez, worst Christmas ever. Awkward pause dramatic effect and I continue talking now I'm kind of wrapping up here uh, the hairs in the back won't be quite as dramatic he says almost making them just as dramatic and then over here you'll, act, you'll actually have to erase stuff actually no what you do with this with this style is you actually just add black there you go you only erase if you have a solid if you're just painting on a solid color. Now you're gonna have to be careful to go back through and just clean up stuff that shouldn't be there. Like right here, I'm gonna try and make the side gauntlet here the brightest area. So that means I have to go through and erase the other spots directly around it that kind of snuck over. You also have to go back and blur back in just so that there's no hard seam like that because that's noticeable when I resize this in the end it might not be so much but I notice it right now and I have the and I have the ability to fix it so I might as well go through and fix it now if we zoom out and look at any other areas that might have had similar problems around here no that's fine back in the neck no I'm fine with that now, I did not shade the neck, or neck, I was just talking about the neck, that's why I said neck. I did not shade the eyes, because uh, the eyes are always just a little bit different in how they get shaded, and so I just trust doing that differently in the end, adding a bit more highlights into the hair just to make this seem a bit less boring. Hmm, the hair actually is looking a little bit like fire now. Hair tutorial. Fire version. Oh my god! That's the end of the tutorial. So, the way that eyes get shaded, much the same. <laughs> Make this huge deal about, oh, they're shaded differently and you have to do them differently. But no, it's, uh, the way that they work is you put down the color and then you add a highlight. Because the way the eyes are reflective, they as it implies, they reflect everything that hits them. So you could actually theoretically get a picture of the whole room in just the reflections of someone's eyes. So what you have to do is you kind of make the shape of the fire source. Now this is a bit extreme. You could just have like a circle done, who cares? But in this case, it, since it is the only source of light in the entire room, I'm gonna, for the sakes of this tutorial, actually do that. Doesn't have to be accurate, doesn't have to be perfect. Then you bring it down a little bit and then you blur the edges. Because it may reflect the entire room, 
but it doesn't reflect it perfectly. It's just kind of the ghost of what the entire thing is, hence why you blur it. Again, you could just do a highlight, and this will probably, most people will just think is a highlight. So, you know, all the people who watch this video know, haha, you're all smarter for this than do the red because I feel like it. There you go. Give me font as well. Now I want that to be a little bit lighter, so let's just go for that. There you go. Now you notice I didn't do so for the other eye, because the other eye is going to be in darkness. Now it's not shaded quite yet, so I'm going to have to go through and do that right now. But that's supposed to be shaded with black. There we go. There we go. But since it's shaded in black and it's in the shade of the light source, it won't be, it won't have the reflection, it won't be colored. It'll just be a generic guy out in the back. Now, one last thing you could do, if you choose to, is again, make another layer and kind of reassert the darkness. Now, that's an option if they're in like a truly, really dark and dismal place. Then you could say like, oh, look how dark this is. And after you're done doing this, you just smudge it again, just like you did before. And all of the other steps, because smudging is a shader's dream. If it's done right, if it's not done right, then it's a nightmare, and you messed up your own drawing, and you're the only one to blame. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. I'm just making noises because I have to make some noise, otherwise it gets kind of, kind of, you know, quiet. You're supposed to be listening to my voice. You listen to my voice. Going back through, erasing, erasing, smudging, whatever the words are, and then change the opacity just so that it matches again. Now that's really dark. So you have that contrast from the really dark to the really light. The background needs to be treated the same though, and that gets a little bit awkward. Mostly, it's just kind of really bright highlights. So let's assume this. And right down here, assuming the area behind like this is uh, bright, is dark because the body is in the way. Blur the H out of it. That's right, I said the H. Blur. Yeah. Alright, and now since that's so far away, really dark. Yep, I just clicked, let it click, and then everything else is going to be really dark with a little bit of brightness around these areas. So if we lower the density a lot, we can kind of assert this brightness, which is mostly just the absence of, well, it's the absence of the color, but it's still brighter from that. And this is supposed to be really vague because it's so far away from the light source that it can't make the hard edges that we're used to in shadows and that we used the entire way through this. And there you go. So when you work on fire, it's a commitment. You have to go through most of the steps so that it stays bright and interesting. Otherwise, it's just fire. And while that can be interesting it's not that useful if you don't have the colors to go or the shading colors to go with it because really that's what's so interesting about the flames is the shadows it casts it's not the fire itself Ooh, the thing on end of a stick you want to have those really bright bright lights and the really dark shadows behind it because that contrast makes the images much more dramatic and that's where the fire really becomes useful is to make the things really dramatic you might be saying, like, 
I don't like drawing fire. Why on earth are you showing me this? Because you don't have to use this for fire. You can use the same technique on, say, something that makes magic. Those effects that you do, uh, that you have the characters make, can be illustrated using these same techniques. Like gradually changing colors as it goes out to be really light, dramatic lighting effects that cause it, it's the same technique can be used. And of course, you can use any technique as shown in previous videos, and those complement really well with what I've shown you today. Anyways, as I round out the video, I'll put my signature down, and like normal, I probably won't be able to talk while I do it, because I'm terrible at talking while writing words. Let's see if I can actually manage this this time, because uh, I just said, ah, uh, I messed it up. Of course, it's 2015. I'm surprised I've been able to actually put 15 down for everything. And that's the video. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, leave them in the comment section below or send them to me. If you actually try out this, please show me. I love seeing what people make. It's fantastic and it always makes my day. Goodbye.